had a head of black hair and you had hair in those days. <laughs> Going back that many years of, uh, ago. I'm delighted to be back on this wonderful, wonderful campus of the University of Connecticut. Uh, Going back 36 years ago, uh, a lot of uh, many years, more years than most of you gathered in this room, and I was elected to Congress and represented the University of Connecticut as part of the second congressional district. Uh, and then over the years, there were wonderful memories here, coming like back being in this very room uh, a couple of years ago with a wonderful youth book fair that the University of Connecticut held and hosted. And the establishment of the Dodge Center in memory of my father, uh, an archival research center dedicated to the issue of human rights. President Bill Clinton came to the University uh, campus to dedicate uh, that facility back in 1995, 15 years ago, on the 50th anniversary of the opening of the Nuremberg Trials, which was the first international trial of its nature in which the, uh, the, those who uh, caused World War II, the leaders of the Nazi regime, uh, were prosecuted. Uh, and so the record of human rights and the collection of recognition of people make a difference every day around the world are recognized on this campus. Eva and Dan, uh, Kim, are examples of the truism, in my view, uh, that one person can make a difference. And I guess it's about that theme that I'd like to share some brief thoughts with you this afternoon. I'd like to thank all again, as well as to thank the student uh, athletes from the University of Connecticut who are with us today as well, uh, and young people from our schools in the area of Connecticut who have joined us. The presence of each and every one of you here today uh, here's an important uh, example of how individuals, even at the earliest stages of your life, can make a difference. And by beginning your involvement in athletics and sports and the arts, you begin to lay that foundation that will give you some of the greatest joy and pleasure in your life for many, many years to come. And it begins early on. And so the fact that many of you at a young age are involved already, I promise you as you're sitting here today, you may not remember a single word I uttered this afternoon. But I want you to remember, for the rest of your lives, you are here on this day, and your involvement in these activities will be some of the most enjoyable experiences you'll have in your life. And sharing those experiences with others who are very different than yourselves will enrich that involvement and that experience more than any words I can utter uh, this afternoon. So I'm glad all of you are here. By bringing together thousands of current and former student athletes from around the world, as we will shortly here, providing them with the tools and encouragement that they need to return home and effect positive change in their own communities and throughout the world. The World Youth Peace Summit, I believe, will help accomplish some incredibly important and very important goals. It will demonstrate the power of individuals to lay the foundations for the creation of a more just and peaceful and tolerant world in which all of us must be a part. All too often, of course, when we talk about global politics, we speak in terms of powerful governments, strong economies, vast armies with great military might and armaments. Rather than individuals, we relegate the impact of the individual cross-cultural exchanges and attempts to create greater understanding and acceptance among peoples with widely divergent customs and views to a very low rank in terms of their ability to effectuate change. And while it is true that none of us in this room necessarily has the power alone uh, to move armies or to change the course of history single-handedly, we should never allow ourselves to be lulled into under underestimating how the actions of one individual can make this world a far better place. So allow me to share with you some examples of how one person has made a difference in the lives of all of us today. Over well, four decades ago, when I was 16 years of age, around the same age as some of you here today, I was myself inspired by what individuals are capable of accomplishing. On a very bitter, bitter cold January day in 1961, I had the opportunity to watch President John Kennedy give his inaugural address from the east steps of the United States Capitol, along with my mother and father sitting that day. And I watched and listened as this young American President, John Kennedy, uttered the now famous call to action, which continues to resonate in the hearts of millions of people, not only in our own country, but around the world. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. President Kennedy's speech that day, above all else, was an affirmation of the importance of an individual's actions, of the idea that each of us has something unique and special to contribute to the world around us, that we all individually have the power to make a difference in our own lives and the lives of others. 
It is these types of exchanges, programs that allow us to meet individuals from disparate cultural backgrounds whose life experiences seem completely alien from our own, that help us to learn to cooperate rather than dictate, that allow us to discover the common traits that bind us all together as human beings, and that will ultimately allow us to build a brighter and more peaceful world and future for the world's inhabitants. Now, I'm fully aware that these individuals and their efforts are far from the panaceas, obviously, that will end wars, ameliorate poverty around the globe, or eradicate racism around the globe. But I also believe that by participating in service, by participating in athletics, by participating in the arts, provide opportunities on every level, local, state, and international, whether they mean spending two years in the Peace Corps, as I did, or something closer to home, like volunteering in your local soup kitchen, being involved in Big Brothers, Big Sisters, being involved in a boys or girls club. There's so many opportunities right within our neighborhoods and backyards to make a difference for people. So these are examples of how individuals can and have made a difference. You don't have to look any further than UConn's own student athletes who are in attendance here today to see the positive impact of such activities on a local level. In 2008, the UConn Division of Athletics launched the Husky Reach, a community service program that brings UConn athletes uh, to Verplank Elementary School in Manchester, Connecticut to serve as role models and to pass on exemplary or extremely valuable lessons about the importance of teamwork, good sportsmanship, and education uh, to the students there. Through your commitment to volunteerism, you as individuals are giving these children the tools that they themselves will one day need to make their communities and world a better and safer place. So there are examples, those are two examples, and that perhaps the first step on the road towards healing and peaceful coexistence in times of intense conflict and discord is to be recognized and to celebrate those individuals and the traits that we all share in common, the intrinsic qualities that make us not Israeli or Palestinian, not American or North Korean, not Pakistani or Indian, but truly as human beings. And that is why the work being done here by the Institute for International Sport and the University of Connecticut is so special, it's so important, and why your involvement here today has great significance and that by bringing young people together from around our small state of Connecticut here to gather together to be a part of these events are something you'll long remember. You are helping to mold a new generation of leaders that will appreciate the similarities that bind us all and that are able to start something positive, start some positive change in your own communities. So today I want to extend a, uh, my best wishes uh, for an enjoyable and successful event that you're going to participate in. And to all of the young people who have joined us here this afternoon, I have a few very simple messages. Stay engaged in your schools and communities. Get involved in extracurricular activities, whether they be playing a sport, picking up a musical instrument, performing in a play. Become engaged in your community. It's terrifically important. And don't shy away from the world around you as well. Study a foreign language. Read international press. Travel. You get a chance to. And of course, vote in elections both local, state, and national, and join international service organizations if you ever have the chance, like something like the Peace Corps. Do something in your own communities as well, like mentoring a young child, organizing a food drive for families who have fallen on hard times, as so many have in our state and around the country. Make the most out of the innumerable opportunities that your education can afford you. Again, you can make a difference. Each one of you here today already can make a difference within your classrooms, your communities, your neighborhoods. And finally, never ever forget that personal action, small scale, individual efforts to heal rifts, bring people together, do have an impact. And never forget the power of an individual to affect change and to make a difference. I thank you for listening to this afternoon.